All right, I'm here with DJ Schwang. All right, if you guys don't know this guy, a very, very wise man, very well connected. Let me just uh, straighten this out here, just so it's straight. Um, DJ, we're here at PDC conference, right? Yes, we are. Day, day three. three. Day three, last day. Uh, DJ, I want to ask you a question. Very simple question. I've been asking this question to a lot of people. In light of opposition, current opposition against the church right now, politics, you know, um, LGBT, all the racism, social issues, all this stuff, social justice. Uh, what do you think is one thing or a couple things, whatever you think, that the church needs to be doing right now um, in, in, in light of this current opposition? What do you think the church needs to start emphasizing right now? What the church needs to emphasize right now is civility and a lot of kindness and grace. I think the church is the best place to work out those differences. And if we don't do it, uh, the world doesn't even have a chance. Because we have the power of Christ, the Holy Spirit living in us, when we can demonstrate community that is diverse, we know how to resolve conflicts, we know how to respect differences, without all the ugliness, uh, that's a witness that will be winsome to the world. All right, man, that was a great answer, great answer. I've given this a lot of thought. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Uh, DJ, something else that I've been doing for a couple months now, I've been asking a lot of Asian Americans, um, Asian American pastors, Asian American ministers, and just servant leaders, things like that. Um, this is kind of like my own research. Um, I don't know if there's a PhD in here somewhere down the line, but I, I'm wondering, within the Asian American church, I feel like that it has a high emphasis on discipleship. That means that Asian American churches, they do this very well. Study theology, teaching Bible study, there's a lot of emphasis on just kind of knowing the Word of God, and um, that's where I came from, and that's where I learned a lot of my theology, things like that. Um, however, I feel like it's so heavily emphasized that some of the other purposes of the church or the functions of the church are not really excelling well. So I believe that Asian American churches do discipleship and fellowship really, really well, but they don't do other purposes well, for example, evangelism, something like that. Um, do you think I'm off on that? Do you think that's a little bit accurate, or is there anything you want to add to that? Uh, um, well, certainly your experience is valid, and uh, I've had a broader breadth of experience because I'm older. So I'm 52 right. this Why July. Why is Oh, 52? No, no, no. Just <laughs> older, so I get more life experiences. I've done church research formally as well as informally uh, for the past 20 years. So um, not to trump you or anything, but no, no, not it, at all. it's a lot. And I, um, I'm always happy to share the things I've learned. been doing that online through blogging and through podcasting and even through a book, if I can mention my book. Yes, absolutely. That. So um, I've captured all of those learnings into a book and continue to share. So let me summarize this way. So over 7,000 Asian American churches in America, most of them are ethnic Asian language churches. So uh, serving the immigrant generation. And there's this emerging trend of English speaking Asian American led multi-ethnic churches that I call multi-Asian church that are um, reaching beyond just Asian Americans. Uh, to non-Asians in the community, in the, in the world as well. I agree with you that there are certain purposes that the Asian church does, the traditional Asian church does better than some of the other purposes. I think the ranking would be fellowship first, mission second, evangelism third, uh, discipleship would be, uh, service would be fourth or third, I think. Uh, actually, service should be further up. Uh, but I would put discipleship as the fifth ranking item, and here's why. Because the frustration of the second generation English-speaking Asian Americans that were either born here or raised here have exposure to depth and breadth of theology through seminary and through podcasts and all the great resources that English theologians have produced. People like Tim Keller, John Piper, and so on and so on. Rick Warren. So um, I think the second generation has a, a much more interest in theology and discipleship in a way that's different than the first generation that would emphasize fellowship and service uh, first and foremost. All right, man, that's actually one of the first uh, 
types of answers I've heard is very, very different. Uh, DJ, can you promote your book here a little bit? Multi-Asian.Church. It's available in print and digital. If you add a comment to this video, you can get a digital copy for free. Wow, digital copy for free. Are we going to provide a link for that? Well, when they add a um, comment, I'll send a link to the person. Okay, so add a comment here, and uh, the author here will give you a link to a free digital copy. All right? I highly recommend this book for anyone who's involved with Asian American ministry, especially Asian American church. Uh, check out this book. Great book. Mr. DJ Schwang, thank you so much. Now, I got a couple questions for you. All right. Are we going to record this on, on, my, Absolutely. on my video? All right. Absolutely. This real, is for you. Okay. Okay. Real quick. I just want to let everyone know like where we're at. This is pretty cool. Uh, the PD podcast team, they let us use their, their van here. So this is pretty awesome where we're at. All right. Okay. Uh, all right. DJ's going to ask me some questions. Now, what do you know about the PD cast? What do I know about the PD Doable Discipleship Podcast? Yeah. Uh, I just got introduced to it actually uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, my friend Brandon, who's, who's now doing it now, uh, one of the pastors on, on the small group team. And um, yeah, I know that kind of weekly they do, they cover these questions and they just talk about it. So it's a pretty good discussion. Great. So another great podcast to subscribe to. All right. Yeah. And then you started a YouTube channel yourself. I did. This is hopefully going to be on the YouTube channel. Yes. Oh, called good. Something to Chew On. And so hopefully you guys can subscribe, share it. Yes. And uh, what has your experience been uh, different or similar in doing live stream versus your fabulously produced YouTube videos? Yeah, I think live stream has uh, kind of a, a fun aspect to it. People might be into it more because it is live, it's not edited, so um, it, it's very, very raw, which is what I like. Uh, you just gotta say it on the spot. I think the channel, which is more edited, uh, is fun in different ways because obviously you could do much more with that. You can make it a little bit more nicer and cleaner and um, you could do a lot more scripted type of things. And so uh, I still like doing both. If you guys are following me, you know that I'm still doing Facebook Live videos, um, kind of like similar to what you guys saw yesterday. Um, but yeah, I think those are the two main differences for me. Cool. And I've played around with the media, media, these mediums as well. So my current side project is called Erasing Shame. Right, right. How is that going, by the way, Erasing Shame podcast? It's starting to uh, get some traction. And uh, I had no idea how much work it takes to produce something nice. Right. So we're sitting in an Airstream that's got five or six cameras, high-end mic, acoustically built. And I could see how this can be valuable for more people. Uh, I kind of went the other extreme, so we were recording conversations and interview on Facebook Live. So uh, instant production, raw webcam, uh, lower quality on the audio, but our aim was to open up honest talk for healthy living. And the way you erase shame is you start talking about those hard things. And for us as Asian Americans, um, we need more of those conversations. I mean, look, if there's stigma over mental health and personal challenges in the Anglo non-Asian non church, can you imagine how much challenge there is for us as Asians and Asian Americans? Right, right. Uh, can you give maybe two sentences, a race shame podcast, what is it about? Two sentences. Honest talk for healthy living. All right. Relationally, okay. emotionally, mentally, and personally. Awesome. You guys, a racing shame podcast. DJ Schwang is doing a lot of good stuff there, a lot of good discussions. Check it out, and uh, thanks for watching, guys. Thank you. Thank you, DJ. Thank you. Thank All you. right.